Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you don't already know, Tacky Tuesday is where we go over short EMS cardiology lessons, and today we're going to be talking all about third degree heart blocks. All right, first let's define a third degree AV block. A third degree AV block, also referred to as a complete heart block, occurs when the impulses from the atria are completely blocked and they're not going through to the ventricles. There is complete AV disassociation. This block cannot sustain life and is the most fatal of all the heart blocks. Many people walk around with first degree heart blocks and that can clinically mean nothing, but in the case of third degree AV block, it is a very, very serious situation. So let's go into the checkoff list of our our third degree AV block. Your rate is going to vary and that's mainly going back to your AV disassociation. Your atrial rate will tend to be faster than your ventricular rate and overall the rate that the monitor picks up tends to be fairly slow between 20 and 40 or 40 and 60 and that's why I put it varies. It, it just really kind of depends and going into the regularity it is regular. The P waves are normal and upright but there are more P waves than there are QRS complexes and what do we remember about the second degree type 2? It also has more more P waves than it does QRS complexes. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it up in the right hand corner. And for your PR interval, I did put varies, but there really isn't a PR interval because there is no association between the P waves and the QRS complexes. Your QRS complex, they typically are normal and also can be wide. And I just want to point out that your P to P intervals tend to be normal and your, your QRS to QRS complexes also tend to march out. So that is one distinct character characteristic of third degree complete heart blocks that the second degree type 2 does not have. And we'll take a look at a strip here in a moment. Signs and symptoms of a third degree AV block can include chest pain, shortness of breath, extreme fatigue, syncope or dizziness, flutters in the chest, nausea and vomiting, diaphoresis, bradycardia, and pale skin. Some of the causes or the risk factors of this specific block can include cardiac surgery, myocardial infarctions. In fact, inferior myocardial infarctions can many times be associated with a complete heart block. Autoimmune diseases like Lyme disease, congenital heart defects, infections like myocarditis, medications or toxins, it can come from beta blockers, digoxin, etc. Penetrating chest trauma, cancer that is somewhere else in the body and it's spread to the heart, thyroid abnormalities, heart disease, and hypertension. And looking at it on a strip, I just want you to really notice the AV disassociation. That is one characteristic about a complete heart block that you can distinguish it from a second degree type 2. There is regularity between the P waves and between the QRS complexes. They just have nothing to do with each other. All right, let's get into possible EMS treatments. So we can check a 12 lead. This is where we'll find out that the patient has a third degree or a complete heart block. We can obtain a set of vitals, get an IV, a blood draw, if that's something that you guys are able to do for your hospital, and treat your patient. How is this patient presenting? Are they presenting with chest pain? Are they hypotensive? Are they bradycardic? If they were having chest pain, would they even be able to receive nitro or would aspirin be your only option? These are the kinds of things that you need to think about. Administer oxygen, uh, atropine if bradycardic and symptomatic, and with these patients, they tend to be bradycardic and symptomatic. Transcutaneous pacing if bradycardic and symptomatic and atropine doesn't work, or you can always go to a dopamine or epinephrine infusion. Obviously, stay within your scope. If this stuff is out of your scope, don't use it. Um, but one of the things that they taught me whenever I was in medic school was all trained dogs escape. It used to be all trained dogs eat imes, but they taught us all trained dogs escape, and that just stands for atropine, transcutaneous pacing, dopamine, and epinephrine. It's just a way for you to remember the possible EMS treatments for symptomatic bradycardia. All right, guys, that's about all I have for you today. I so appreciate you tuning in again, and make sure you check out all my past heart block videos because they'll give you some clarity of the differences between the four of them. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Bye.